<laughs> what is going on guys welcome to rants red talk where we discuss all the topics you send through to me on twitter and we are sponsored by the one football app for all your up-to-date footballing news so make sure you scroll down if you haven't already click the link in the description and um, grab the app also we ain't got long left what day are we on now tuesday we've got two more days of your 25 percent off um early access black friday fresh ego kid discount i've put the link in the description as well guys so if you just go down there use the the promotion codes rants 25 um, and you get 25% discount off for the next couple of days. So if you haven't used that already, you can go down there to treat either yourself or someone else to some Christmas presents or whatever. Um, just thought, man, would plug that for you lot one more time. Because I think, yeah, this will be the last video that comes out before the discount code runs out. I think it runs out on Thursday midnight. Actually, I'll drop a Thursday evening video. But whether or not that's too late by the time you watch it, I don't know. So... Um, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that out there anyway. All right, let's get to your questions. First one at safe5044. It says, Tony is my favorite player, and his all round game, such as his link up, has been amazing. But he hasn't scored now in three Premier League games. That's not a long time. Is it safe to say if he doesn't get above 10 goals, we should? be looking at another striker all right bro ah how can i say this um in the most um respectful way because i respect all of you guys what you've said there three goal three games isn't a long time one two you've just highlighted that his all-round game has been brilliant but he hasn't scored got um in three games like why is that an issue to you now, bruv? It's three games. Like, it happens. Even prolific goal scorers, not saying Tony is one, go more than three games without scoring. You think Alan Shearer never went more than three games without scoring? You think Harry Kane's never gone more than three games without scoring? You think that Lukaku didn't go ten games without scoring as good as his Premier League record is? Like, that statement actually doesn't make sense. But the reason why I read it out is because I want people to understand... That in the modern game, playing that role as the one up front, as the pivot, yeah, there's loads of different ways you can play it. You can play it in the Lukaku way where the whole team needs to be built around you for you to score goals and you don't contribute otherwise to your all-round play. Aubameyang's the same as well. If Aubameyang's not scoring goals for Arsenal, he's doing nothing. That's why the other days the guy called him the light-skinned Danny Welbeck, bruv. Like, I don't think it's that because Danny Welbeck's hold-up play and link play is actually a lot better than Aubameyang's. But Aubameyang is a very, very good finisher. But that's all he is. His all-round game ain't that good, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not. Players like Firmino, players like Karim Benzema, and players like now Martial in this new role that he's playing, these guys sacrifice the numbers... Of goals scored for the team because they bring in other players and the players around them will score more goals so it's either you can have a, a player like Harry Kane who the team needs to be built around putting the ball into the areas which he can score or you have a selfless mobile almost like a false nine like what Tony's playing now um, Benzema plays for Real Madrid Bobby plays for Liverpool these guys will still get you double figures goals a season, but what they'll get you is they'll get you a lot of goal contributions. Um, Marcus Rashford's goal against Sheffield United was largely down to Martial's link play. Largely. Because if Martial doesn't hold that ball and then play a perfectly weighted pass into Daniel James, Rashford doesn't get that goal. So, I don't really know how going three games without a goal considering how well he's linked the play and what he's contributed to the team and actually contributed to Rashford actually finding a bit of form his best form in his career so far I don't see how that warrants looking for another striker based on three games bro. I think that that question's a bit mad however I read it out for that spe um, specific reason because I want people to understand he's sacrificing one bit of his game for the greater good and actually he's doing very well and his creativity is underrated so when people are saying oh we should get fucking Haaland and that not only is that guy unproven and he's just going through a purple patch anyone can go through a purple patch 
But his all-round game can't even chat to Tony Martial's, bruv. Like, he's a Nordic Lukaku, bro. His all-round game, his touch is a win. This ain't that great. He's just big, he's powerful, and he knows where the fucking goal is. If that's the direction we're going in, we might as well have kept Lukaku, bruv. Literally, innit? If Oli wants to go to this fluid front three, counter-attacking and all of that, he don't fit that mould, innit? So as much as he's banging goals and it looks good on paper because he's the next gas, he don't really fit what Oli's saying that he's trying to do, which tells me that Oli don't know what the fuck he's doing if he does want him or it's just paper talk. All right, let me know what you think in the comment section about that, guys. The next one, at Mr. Max Sun. How on earth does it make sense that we give contract extensions to arguably our four worst players in the squad? Jones, Young, Pereira and Mata. Three of the four don't start anymore and Pereira only starts because Pogba's injured. Well, boy, we have to wait and see until Pogba gets back and Pereira's still fucking playing in that 10. That is when Oli just needs a kick, bruv. But you're right. I don't know what the fuck is going on there. Jonah, as fucking Wally likes to call him. Mata, I already said that. We've got Angel Gomez. There's no need to keep one Mata, like... But he's still there. Um, Ashley Young, I can understand why he's been kept for the changing room because he does add a good seniority, a good balance. Um, he's one of the only players in there that really knows what it's like to be in the United changing room when they were great. Him and um, David De Gea. So I think that it's important that he's there. I do. Um, and Pereira's dog shit. We know that. Um, when we took him off, he started playing football. So, bruv, Oli's done a lot of weird things. He's done a lot of weird things, to be honest. I can't I can't defend the guy. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I think giving Pereira that contract extension, especially, he didn't really do nothing for it. When I think back, it's not like Pereira was on that really, really good form and he warranted the extension. Like, it kind of... I don't know where the faith in Pereira actually came from. Like, one one free kick in pre-season? I don't really know. I mean, he must be an amazing trainer because on the pitch, I'm not seeing it. So, all in all, man, I just think that the fact that Oli's keeping these fucking losers on, yeah, it kind of shows that his vision for the club is not in line with mine. Probably not in line with a lot of yours, innit? And that's why I say Wally out, bro. Bongris underscore... I don't know the rest. Have you ever seen a big team start a game with two midfielders and five defenders? <laughs> if you have, who passed the ball to the three attackers? To me, if you play a formation with three centre-backs, you need an attacking midfielder that's going to feed the full-backs and the attackers. Thoughts? All right. If you start a three at the back for me, yeah? Your two wing-backs need to be wing-backs. Not right backs like Wan Bissaka. He's a right back. He's not a wing back. Or they have to be wingers. You do what Chelsea done and you play Victor Moses there because Victor Moses is a winger. If you're gonna play that wide player, they either need to be someone that's an attacking fullback that can play fullback. Like no wing back, sorry. Not fullback. Fullbacks and wing backs are not the same thing. Your right back, your left back, and your wing backs are not the same thing. So you either play a winger there, like a Victor Moses, and that's why I said to Flex, when we done the Flex and Rant show, if we were playing that 3-5-2, yeah, um, as a wing-back, because of his profile, Daniel James could actually play as a wing-back. He could, because he defends naturally anyway, and he's got the pace and the directness to go up and down that line. So he could actually play in that role. He could do a job in that role, like, do you know what I mean? And... The mad thing is Fred could play left wing back as well. Fred is left footed. He's small as well. He's got pace. He can get up and down and he can pass. Fred could play left wing back. He could. But playing a proper defensive right back there in um, in wan -Bissaka, not only does it take away from wan -Bissaka, I've seen Ashley Young play right side centre back. I've seen Herrera play right side centre back. wan -Bissaka could play that right side centre back in that formation instead of playing him as right wing back. Let me know what you think about that. I think it's pretty straightforward he could do that job. Easily. He's got the height. He's got the pace. He reads the game well. There's no reason why he can't play right side of, of a free and centre-back if we're going to play that and play someone else that's more attacking. Um, but you're right. 
it's five defenders. Like, Oli can try and make it out looking like it's um, an attacking formation. It's not. It was very defensive. And then you've got two midfielders and none of them really break the lines with their passing. I don't think it's important per se to have that because Sheffield United played the two in midfield. They played the one and then they played the two up front. We chose to do the three. Cool. What you're saying is you want a number 10 to play as one of the two central midfielders. That could work. Manchester City have done it before in the 4-3-4-3 uh, three, three and played David Silva in that position because he can break the lines with passes. But then you sacrifice the defensive side of it, which is fine because that means you're making a 3-4-3 three, three an attacking formation by playing a forward-thinking attacking player in that midfield. I don't think you have to play someone in there, but it fucking helps. Do you know what I mean? It's all about balance, guys. It's all about balance. Um, I'd see where you're going, but I wouldn't really play a number ten in centre mid. Like I, I don't, I don't think you have to to make that work. I just think that the balance of the wingers, the difference between an attacking and defensive formation is what you want these wide players to do. At Bake Pearson, will the board approach Poch or will they bottle it to avoid media black backlash? I think. And I said on the Flex and Rant show, I believe that when Poch got sacked, Ferguson would have rang him immediately because Ferguson does that father figure thing, um, the godfather thing. When people get sacked, when Arsene got sacked, all these men get sacked, they get a phone call from Sir Alec, bruv, come have a bottle of wine with man, you get me? And I hope that he called Poch. I hope he did. I'd like to think he did. Um, media backlash. They got media backlash for, uh, for sacking... LVG and Jose. I don't think these men care about media backlash. I think it's a financial thing. I honestly think that Oli won't cost a lot to sack. He ain't a high profile manager, so no one will hold it against us. And also, Pochettino is free now, whereas he would have cost maybe 30 million to get him out of his contract. So, I do not think that Oli is safe just because of media um, backlash potential. I believe. That every single game Oli don't lose, he's closer to getting sacked. Only because Poch's shadow is looming. Looming. Let me know what you think, guys. Christian J, are there any players from the past you think would have became a good player, become a good player um, for United, but either wasn't given enough time or played in the, the right system to flourish? Um, and by the way, that wasn't me, like, being an asshole or anything like that. I know, like, we've got a lot of followers from um, from abroad. Do you know what I mean? I know English isn't your first language. And a lot of the time when I get messages from you, like, I still appreciate it. You know what I mean? I still appreciate when you lot, um, try to say something. Because sometimes I do see in the comments where people are like, right, right, you can't even speak English and this, that and the other. you got to realise that. My channel and the United Stand is watched all over the go all over the globe. Do you see what I'm saying? So like it's big ups to everyone that's um sending in questions from everywhere. Um Yes, the immediate players that spring to mind for me are Memphis Depay and Wilfred Zaha. I think Memphis Depay came in at a time where well he's got all the potential in the world but you come from the Dutch league which isn't very competitive it's not very physical it's not very fast and then you also come into Manchester United with a manager like Louis van Gaal yeah who is very very set in his ways Memphis is a maverick in it Memphis is the kind of guy where you have to show your faith in him and then you just have to just leave him be let him do what he wants to do not necessarily on the pitch but that's in his personal life and everything. You just He's a flamboyant character, a bit like Pogba. You've got to just show them that they're appreciated and then you just have to show ultimate faith in them to just do what they need to do. Memphis is showing now when he plays in the central role. Um, man's like a big, big, big figure in the Dutch national team. Massive figure and a big figure at his club as well. He handles the pressure very well. He's a, he's a top player. His numbers... Um, in Europe and domestically goals to game are very impressive and Memphis always had that quality in him he just came in to a team that was transitioning and um, he didn't have a manager that suited his personality Van Gaal likes quiet players he likes 
he likes players that will just do as they're told. That's why famously he works very well with fresh, new, young players because he's just... Van Gaal's more like, yo, just do this. This is what I say, you do it, cool. If you don't do it, you're not playing. Like, I saw an interview in Memphis and Van Gaal was telling him that, right, he needs to stop overtraining because he, he likes to do extras, extra free kicks, extra, like, core work, extra things. And Van Gaal was telling him he trains too much. But Memphis's attitude is like, I want to be the best. I need to be better. I need to keep training, innit? And him and Van Gaal fell out over that. That's a stupid thing to fall out over, personally. However, Van Gaal's very set in his ways. So they they just didn't gel. I would he would walk into this Manchester United team now. Memphis to play. Walk into it. Same goes for Wilfred Zaha. Wilfred Zaha is one of the best wingers in the Premier League. He should be at a top four club. Because of how his career's gone, he's been extremely unlucky that it's been a combination of him going to Manchester United, it not working out, him going back, and then the transfer market's gone mad. So now a player like Wilf is worth 70 million. Who's going to spend 70 million on Wilfred Zaha? Arsenal don't have the money. Man City already are full in, are stocked in that thing. Liverpool are really stocked um, at the moment. And even if they weren't, they're not going to spend what they spent on Van Dijk on him. Manchester United have got a buyback clause, but probably their ego more than anything wouldn't let them admit that they've made a fucking mistake to go back for him and Tottenham can't afford him. So now he's probably going to end up seeing seeing his time out at Crystal Palace, which is very unfortunate for him. But Wilfred Zaha is a Manchester United calibre player and I believe that had he come in under another manager... Even Mourinho would have probably liked Wilfred Zaha for the simple fact that Mourinho likes players that can kind of make things out of nothing because he doesn't really like to coach attacking football. And Wilf is very much an off-the-cuff Manchester United kind of player that he could just make things happen for us. So I think that Wilf just right place, wrong time, also maybe a bit younger and less mature. I think if Wilfred Zaha comes to Manchester United, probably... Under Louis van Gaal, probably van Gaal's second season, he's probably still at the club. Um, let me know what you think. Any guys that I missed out, those are just the two that jumped completely straight out to me. The Green Devil, the cost of our subs against Sheffield United were a whopping zero. The cost of our goal scorers were a whopping zero. It's not that grounds for the second of Ed Woodward. Because what did we spend eight eight hundred million on Poso Alex Ferguson to be playing a team full of academy boys? Spot fucking on. Nobody's ever broke it down like that to me. Now when I see that broken down, it's amazing, bruv. It's amazing. It's so good I wish I thought of it, bruv. Like, I can't take credit for that. That's amazing. Spot fucking on. What did you spend eight hundred million on? What the fuck did you spend 800 million on? And these, this is the guy that the Glazers trust to continue to navigate the journey of this club. This shows you how fucking incompetent them tossers are. But certain men are saying they don't want the Saudis though. So let's keep these fucking numb nuts. Like, I am... Bruv, 800 million down the fucking drain. And where are we? We're battling for top six. That I'm not even too confident we're going to make. That statement right there tells you everything that you need to know about Manchester United Football Club, about Ed Woodward and about the fucking Glazers. Do you know what I mean? Absolute full of shit. 800 million and nothing to fucking show for it. My head hurts, bruv. <clears throat> My head hurts. That's definitely grounds for a second. At DJTNT4. Is Ollie the next Tim Sherwood? He is. Both got the job because of the fans, the ones, but really they're both stop gaps at best. Tim got replaced with Poch. Hopefully Oli will too. Oli out, Poch in. Brilliant. Tim Sherwood, another one. I wish I thought of myself, blood. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a perfect comparison. Ex-player. Weren't a great player at the time. Don't get it twisted. People love Oli because he scored in a Champions League final, yeah? But he was a fucking sub, mate. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't a top player. He was just a good player. He was a player that we've got a lot of sentimental attachment to, but he weren't a great player. 
he's not a great manager either. Tim Sherwood was a two bob fucking footballer, bruv. Like handful of England caps, he was shit. This is Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, bruv. Now, if Oli Gunnar Solskjaer was English, he would have probably had less caps than Tim Sherwood, bruv. Like, honestly, like when we break it down, no emotion. It's a fucking joke. It is. So, Tim Sherwood is the closest thing to Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Spot on. Um, amazing observation, guys. If you've got any funnier ones that you want to throw my way, because I always love a good laugh in testing times like this, um, let me know. But I feel like Tim Sherwood is the closest because people make the Dalgleish comparison, but Dalgleish was actually a decent footballer and he was a club legend as well, away from just scoring one goal. Like, he was a legend because he was a good footballer. Oli was a legend because he scored a good goal. Well, an important goal, should I say, because... It wasn't a good goal. He just hung his leg out. Um, yeah, let me know below. At Man Like Memphis 1. What's the point in playing youth if Oli can't coach them? He has no style, system or credentials. Plus, do you think Chong's playing style suits more of an overlapping left back, left wing back than a winger? Because he doesn't have blistering pace. Oi, that's two questions, but I'm going to answer them because they're both good. You're right. It's all right, Oli's saying he can give youth a chance, yeah? But he's not good at developing players. So two things need to happen, yeah? You give youth a chance in a team full of experience and they can learn from the good players around them, which we don't have, or you coach them to improve, which he don't have. So, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? It's either you're LVG and you can develop players, which is proven, or... Like Sir Alec Ferguson, because I wouldn't say that he was amazing at developing players. He, he, he wasn't really that like that. Anyone that knows anything about Sir Alec Ferguson knows that he was a manager, but he wasn't the coach like Carlos Kiros was the coach and was out there. And we had people like Rennie Mullenstein and that. These are coaches, isn't it? Sir Alec Ferguson was the man manager, the motivator, all of those things. In terms of developing players, like that wasn't his job. His job was to identify when these men are ready and put them in amongst already elite players we had. If you don't have these elite players for these men to learn off and you can't coach them yourself, what the actual fuck is Oli doing at the wheel, blood? What is he doing at the wheel? He's a pagan, bruv. He's a bum. And as for Taif Chong, I know what you're saying. Tong don't, Chong don't have blistering pace. And to be fair, his ball control looks a bit suspect anyway. I think he would be a decent fullback. You're right. Left fullback, left wing back, I keep fucking mixing them up. Left wing back, I wouldn't say left back because he can't defend. But I reckon left wing back in a five or like three at the back, depending on how you want to be. I reckon he could do a job there, bro. But that's the same reason why I said I reckon Fred could do a job there because he's technically good. He can cross. He's got pace. He can get up and down. And he's small. Like, I think Fred could easily play as a left wing back. Hey, let me know about all of, all of the above. Or below, should I say, bruv. Because you, man, are dropping it down there. All right. And last but not least, it says, Kev McGee, if Poch goes to Bayern, who would your choice of manager be to replace Wally? I love the way that is catching on, guys. Um, I've said it before. It'd be Ten Hag for me. It has to be Ten Hag for me because... He's shown that he doesn't need a big budget to get a team playing good football. He will promote youth, and that sticks to the Manchester United ethos. He will develop players. He's shown that he can continue to get his team to play at a very good level, despite having to sell some of his best players, which he won't have to do at Manchester United, which will mean he'll be able to hold on to players and improve them. And I just like the style of football he plays. He's a positive manager. Um, so... As I've said before, if I was in charge of the club, I would go over there, I would raid them for Edwin van der Sar and I would take him too. I would. Do you know what I mean? If you want to be a successful business, um, you have to look at other businesses and see how they are run and look for a model that kind of suits you in it. And the Ajax model suits how I would like the club to be ran bar the selling of our best players because we simply don't need to. Um, let me know in the comment section who would be your first choice manager, guys. And that was your Rants Red Talk. Big up for all the questions. Love them. Again, one football app. 
our new sponsor make sure you head down to the comment section if you haven't already download the app for all your footballing news and also your black friday early access is available until thursday at midnight guys so just use the code rants 25 that's in the description as well if you want to buy some early christmas presents buy yourself some new drip whatever the hell you want to do spoil yourself um while you've still got time and yeah that was emotional that was fun um total football will be coming out soon so look out on twitter follow me on the socials at rants and bants on twitter and instagram i'm gonna put out the usual tweet make sure you comment below with your questions and then they'll be read out just like this one all right peace <laughs>